الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للصلاة هيا للفلاة هيا للفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين لقد قالك إنسان في أكسني تقوين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وده لا شريك الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد. I greet you once again with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, what we have said is we seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan, and that we open with Allah's name, the beneficent, the most merciful. He is the one that all praise belongs to, the Lord of all the worlds, or Lord of all systems of knowledge, and that he, Allah, is certainly the one that has created the human being in the best of makes. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and he has no associate nor partner. And we bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger and his servant. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm very, very honored uh, to be here on the best of days, Yom Jumah, the best of days that we could be called together in unity that we may give thanks and praise to Allah the Most High. As we are understanding and being taught in our Islam, uh, just a few months ago we had what is called Eid al-Fitr, and in a few days we will have Eid al-Hadda. And these are the two great festivals of Islam that come twice a year. But the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us and told us that we have a recurring Eid every seven days, every week, the Jummah is an Eid. It is a time of celebration. It is a time of rededication to the life of the Muslims. And where else could you find in the world a religion that on the day of Jummah, all Muslims strive, all Muslims regard this day. It is one of the beautiful regulatory practices of Muslims. So we give praise and thanks to Allah, and I'm very honored uh, to have been asked by our beloved Imam Sultan Muhammad to deliver today's uh, khutbah, and may Allah uh, accept our uh, deeds, and may Allah accept what we have to say in this short time. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I wanted to start by saying that it is very important that we understand that no one is worthy of praise but Allah. When we make this prayer, our fatiha, we constantly say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And when we're making that statement, that proclamation in all of our prayers, no matter how many units or cycle of prayer there is, we're going to make that statement, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all the world, the Lord of all systems of knowledge. Allah is he who knows all. He's the best knower. He's the all-knowing. And that statement, if we really truly understand it, should humble each and every one of us down because we don't have to carry the burden of being the Lord of all systems of knowledge. We don't have to carry the burden of being the best knower or the all-knowing. We submit to the one who is the best of knower. We submit to the one who is Lord of all systems of knowledge. And therefore, when we submit as we are growing and as we are taught in our Islam, there is nothing that Allah will not share with the best 
of his creation, which is in fact the human being. That's why we said it. Lakata kalaka insan afi axini takwim. We're created in the best of molds, the best of makes. And therefore, Almighty God Allah saw fit that in this mold, in this make, he would have a creature that would reflect him to such a degree that he would put all the lesser creation under the authority of the human being. However, however, we know that the human being has gone astray. And therefore, as we have gone astray, Allah has sent into the world uh, the world prophets and messengers throughout the ages of time, throughout the token of time, while also, as we read in the 103rd chapter of the Quran, and prophet and messenger, and prophet and messenger, all coming one after another, and it seems as if the human being just can't get it together. The two attributes of Rahman and Rahim, these are recurring. These are most oft-repeated because before Allah is quick to punish, he gives us his mercy. He gives us his ghafar or his forgiveness. And this is why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught so many of us to don't play around with Allah's mercy because Allah's mercy does not last forever. But you know how we are. We'll play around with time and can I get a little more and give me a little bit more room. Even when we've been disciplined as children, we promised mommy, we promised daddy, I would never do that again. But as soon as they're gone, the thought comes up, man, how can I get away with it the next time? This is the challenge of us as we have matured in this state in the best of mold. So I wanted to talk to you today from the 110th chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Nasr, uh, which is entitled The Help, um, because how can we be successful as Muslims without the help of Allah the Most High? When we find ourselves getting to a point where we think we're the ones that's doing it, then Allah will teach us a lesson real quick and humble us down to let us know you're not the one in charge. I am. So a Muslim strives to gain and ask for consistently the help of Allah because all of us in this journey in life will reach a point where we don't know what to do. So many of our poor brothers and sisters are out in this dunya, out in this world, and they really don't have a clue as to what to do. And it is the job of we, the Muslims who have been invited, keep this in mind now, we've been invited into the aha, the truth. We've been invited into this way of life, not to come in and get comfortable one with another, but we have to do the greater work, which is the dawah, or as uh, Master Fadr Muhammad told us, he named it fishing, but the action is the same. What does that mean? That as I recognize that Allah has invited me into his way of life, and with his assistance and with his help through submission to him, he has caused me to come up into a better stage of life, a better progression in life. And so I'm duty bound immediately to go out and find someone else who is definitely in need of Allah's help and bring them to Allah's favor and to the cause because there's great reward in that. Do you know that charity, according to what the prophet, peace and prayers be upon him, said, is a smile as charity? A smile. And you know, as Muslims, sometimes we look like we eat nails. Man says, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. A smile is charity. And have you ever seen how, when you're in the presence of someone that you love, and then sometimes someone who you don't even know offers you a smile? 
and a kind greeting. And because your heart is full of Allah, but troubled over something, that brings us right up out of it. And you know you're on it when somebody smiles at you and you immediately smile back at them. So in this chapter called Al-Nasr, it was uh, reported that this was the final surah revealed to the Holy Prophet, peace and prayers be upon him, and that after this revelation came to him, only three verses after it was revealed, eight days later, he returned to Allah. In these three verses, but very powerful verses, very instructional verses, we can learn something about the modern time in which we now live. So in this chapter, it reads, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When Allah's help in victory comes, So we have two situations here. We have help, Nasr, and then we have Fatah. This is victory. There's another chapter of the Quran entitled The Victory. But when Allah's help in victory comes, it reads, And thou seest men entering the religion of Allah in companies, in droves, in big crowds. This is to show us something about the overwhelming victory of Islam after Islam had suffered so many setbacks and blows to the holy prophets and the early Muslims, but yet Allah promised the prophet, I will make you victorious over the disbelieving people. And I know for a fact that the prophet believed that every step of the way. But the believers sometimes were challenged over this journey with him, especially when he did things that they did not understand. When he commanded them to do things that may have sometimes made them look weak in the presence of enemies who were out to kill them, but he was being guided by the best of Noah's. He was being shown how to lead a people to victory with limited casualty, minimal casualty. So when we read that, we will see men entering the religion of Allah in companies. This is telling us something about many people coming. But the Holy Prophet warned. He said, you will see many come, but you will also see many leave. So what is that to teach us? Don't get excited when you see the masses coming because as the masses come, we may be one of those who the masses have to replace because we've become a dead branch, a weak branch on the tree of Islam and Allah will never be mocked in his progression so he can bring another people, as he says in the Quran, in our place. And I know through my own experience that when we start thinking we don't need God's help, you know in your now, so in your soul, in yourself, that Allah is moving you to the side and bringing someone else in your place. And that's a humbling thing if you believe. So you have to repent. Oh, what am I doing? So much so, it's so beautiful that even when we get like that, Allah brings us right back to our right senses by his permission. And so have you ever gotten to a point in your life where you become so burdened down that all you could do at the moment is say, oh Allah, and I mean, yell it out. And when we do that, Look at how the burden is relieved off of our shoulders. So our job is to understand that Allah promised his apostle victory, and we know that Allah will never lie because he can. 
But have we become the doubters today? Oh, I've been hearing people say that one day the masses are coming to Islam. Yeah, but as long as we're trying to look for some crowd in our masajid, that's not the companies. The companies are coming now because the religion of Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Why? Because Allah says he it is who sends his guidance with his messenger and that he will cause Islam to prevail over all the other religions, though the polytheists may be averse. Now, and if Allah says he's going to make his religion, Islam, prevail over all the other religions, who then can stop it if you and I believe in Allah and know that he cannot lie, know that his will will not be fretted or vetted by any enemy. And so what we see now, Everywhere on the planet, Islam is growing. Do you know that in France, over 10% of France's population is now Muslims? In the UK, the biggest name in the UK is no longer John, but Muhammad. What's happening? Islam spreading in places, in Germany, spreading. Now, the traditional Muslim states are having issues. And in their fighting one with another, it still does not frustrate Allah's will. He makes the Islam grow in places outside of that center because the center has to come and return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala themselves. But as I find when we talk about help, we always try to seek help from somebody that we think has some material to give us. We think that help only comes in the form of material gain. We're quick to call somebody and tell them, I'm short on my rent. Can you do what? Help me out. I need some gas for my car. Can you help me out? So our view of what help is, and how we qualify help stems from our slave experience. And so I'm clear that we don't put our faith in Allah as Muslims sometimes more than we do so-called Islamic scholars who are not worthy. So our slave experience as black people in America, we always wanted to be legitimized by our slave masters and their children. So if they approved, you're good. I'm going to get to that in the second part with our brother in the NFL. But if they approve, we feel that we're legitimate. Even in religion, we only feel legitimized when somebody else says you're legitimate. So we're waiting on the east to legitimize our work in the West when the Holy Prophet said that at the end, the sun would reverse its course and what was rising in the East would then rise in the West. Well, he's not talking about the physical sun. He's talking spiritual light, that darkness would overspread the East. And in that moment, the light of Islam would be coming up out of the West, I heard our leader, my leader and teacher say, who has a better heart than the black man of America? Look at our people. We've taken so much, but we're always willing to go the extra mile. Well, so it is with Allah. That's why he does not put on any believer a burden beyond our scope to bear. And if we would just put our faith in that, then you would find that each day that we're blessed to be alive, Allah will increase us in ilm or knowledge. He will increase us in faith, increase us 
in spirit. And the more victories we have, the smaller ones, then we know the big victory that this sort of is talking about is coming. Why? Because he says in the end, celebrate the praise of thy Lord and ask his protection. Surely he is ever returning to mercy. Some translations say, off returning to mercy. For sebi bihamdi, rapi kawa stak firu, innahu kenatawaba. This is telling us that there are certain levels that we have to do what? We have to give thanks and praise. See? Because when victory comes, it wasn't me. When victory comes and came, it's not you. It's Allah interceding in our affairs, showing that he can ride in on our faith and prove to every enemy as it was at Badr. He showed them, though you are greatly outnumbered, I will give you the victory. But at a hood, a hood, we thought the victory was supposed to come just because. And we think because we say la ilaha illallah that the victory is guaranteed. Yeah, I can bear witness there's no God but Allah, but Allah is going to require me to do something. So I close this first part by saying go back and read the Quran and see how Allah arranged the verses. But not just arranged the verses, how he paired attributes together. How he paired certain words together that wherever you had something dealing with iman or faith, there was something either right next to it or a little down the line that's going to call us to the action of it. So Islam is not the kind of religion as it was under Christianity where we could say out of our mouths and not practice what we say we believe in. Because Islam put an end to lip profession because it's not about what we say more than it is about what we do. May Allah guide us and protect us in this hour and may he grant us the victory in this hour and that even if the enemy seems to have an upper hand, keep faith, celebrate the praise of thy Lord, give him the thanks. And you will see that he is off returning to mercy, the merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salat wa salam. Allah Sayyid Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Prophet, peace and prayers be upon him, said in a long hadith, but I'm going to take out two lines of the hadith as he was traveling, giving guidance to a young boy. And there are two lines in this that are so rich as it relates to this chapter of the Quran that we are speaking on today, the Holy Prophet says, peace and prayers be upon him, he said, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. Think of that now. If you ask, then ask Allah alone. And if you seek help, then seek Help from Allah alone, he will grant it. Think of that now. Here the prophet, peace be on him, is telling this young man, be mindful of Allah. There's an old um, saying, I guess, I don't know that they teach young people this anymore, but remember we used to be told that you should think five times, then some people upped it ten times before you do what? Speak. 
because that's training us to be mindful of what we, we may say. Because if we speak prematurely, it can cause a lot of problems. If we speak when we're too emotional, it can cause a lot of problems. So we have to learn to be mindful of Allah, mindful of his messenger. Why? Because all of us have our way. But depending on the day of the week, Carlos's way is not the best way. And at this point in life experience, I know it. So I have to be mindful of who I'm talking to, but also what I'm getting ready to say. Because what we say can have such an impact, it can cause people to enter into a state where they go backwards. And if you don't have the ability to pull them out of that past experience, which they charging you with now, then we might be like it says in the Holy Quran, we're going to be sorry for what we did. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. He says, be mindful of Allah and you will find him out in front of you. I must say, unapologetically. That is how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad established Islam in the West. He didn't have the help of Mecca. He didn't have the help of Medina. He did not have the help of the immigrant population that were beginning to settle. He had and put all of his faith in Allah and he knew that as, as long as he kept Allah out in front, he would be successful and have the victory. See? Allahu Akbar. See, when we look at the wise way, he guided this group of people in America to be standard bearers. Then who of us in our increase of knowledge of the Quran could judge him because he wasn't precise with the language, but yet he established the Arabic language in our nation as early as 1946, not even a year out of prison, away from his family. He saw the need to establish the language of the Quran in the community. And many graduated out of the school system, knowledgeable of Arabic, fluent in Arabic. He didn't use the term tahara or purification. He just told us things like, be clean at all times. <laughs> how, how can you be clean all the time? By being mindful that whenever I enter into a state, not even just physically, but in my thoughts, and in my words and in my actions, I have to straighten that up. He told us to take a full and complete bath once a day because he understood we can't go a day with a bird bath. We have to have goosel, you know. <laughs> but he had inspectors. And some of you remember those days. And that was so strong on us, we never even wanted to walk out the house unless we were clean. Internally as well as externally. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad understood what he was doing in this journey to us because we had been so broken that he had to build us up by the grace of Allah to put that pure book, the Quran, in us in a way that we would not treat the Holy Quran like we treated the revelation from other prophets called Bible, but we would treat it like we did when we were Christians, meaning we would say out of our mouths that which we did not practice. So we're a blessed community. Because from this community, you have a situation in North America that they have attempted to erase, and they can't. 
because no Muhammad Ali without Elijah Muhammad. No Malcolm X without Elijah Muhammad. From his own loins, Imam W.D. Muhammad, Rahimullah Ali, may Allah's mercy be on him. That scholarship that was in his son is still being challenged by the East because the East didn't like his father and at a certain point the East recognized they didn't like him. You know why? Because the two students, I'm talking Imam Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, understood their rearing that nobody can lead us but ourselves and Allah. And when you start challenging them, in the East, that you have your own madab or school of thought based on geography, based on circumstance, based on culture, then we're not accepting Arab culture for the religion. God already gave us a culture. So they were challenged. So they said, we don't like Elijah Muhammad's interpretation. And they said the same thing about Imam Muhammad. We don't like your interpretation. And they certainly don't like the tafsir of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Why? Because it wasn't for them to do from over there. One came from over there to set this up. And then he left us. And when he left us, some might have said, well, that's done, because whenever your main person leaves, normally your movement is done. So I leave you with this because in Surah al Nasr, he said many would come, but many would leave. And the moment that he was gone, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as soon as he was gone, all that was in the people of wanting leadership and wanting this situation comes right up because that's the thing that organizational structure is challenged by. But if we put our faith in Allah and ask his help, he will give us the victory. Look at what the Holy Prophet finishes with this. He says, and know that the victory comes with patience. Sobera, relief with affliction and hardship with ease. Dear Muslims, we're not in this to live the easy life. Allah is going to try us. He has already tried us. But even in the trial, it's pain, then relief. See? Victory comes out of being patient. We're going to win. And he says, this ease, because in the Quran, he mentions difficulty twice. And whenever Allah doubles up anything we find in the language, you should pay close attention to it. Because it's coming double in the situation. So difficulty, ordained. Struggle, ordained. But from it, if we just hang in there, here comes the ease, here comes the relief, and here comes the victory. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. The Honorable Minister Farrakhan said just in one line on social media, as he always does, he says, one must realize that the Nasr or the help of Allah is sufficient. <laughs> See? But I leave you with something from him. The honorable minister said, who is better than Allah to depend on for our sustenance in the granting of our innermost desires? Who knows what is best for us other than Allah? That's why we got to keep Allah out in front. He says, oft times we have desires which, if fulfilled, would bring us great sorrow. However, if we are strong enough to desire only that which pleases Allah, then we can never suffer disappointment and grief over not fulfilling some cherished desire. Allah teaches us in the Holy Quran that he is the grantor of security and that he straightens the means of subsistence 
for whom he pleases. It is he then who can cause the earth to reveal its treasures to us, and it is he who can keep us from the treasures of the earth. So let us depend on Allah and ourselves. Dear believers, everything that you have desired as a Muslim, seek the assistance, the assistance and the help of Allah. And if it's good for you, you will find Allah granting it. But if we have desires that are not of him, he may allow us to get it. And the moment that we do, all hell breaks loose. And all we can do is come right back to him, <laughs> ask his forgiveness, give him the praise, and know that the victory ultimately is his. And if we are his, the victory is ours. May Allah grant you the light of his understanding. May Allah increase you. May Allah increase the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May he bless his family. May he have mercy on all of his companions. And may he cause us to be a force in the world that the shaitan will be brought to his knees. Assalamu alaikum. Dear believers, thank you so much for allowing me this time to stand on this member. I'm very humbled and honored to have stood before you today. I don't take it lightly. And I ask that if I made any mistakes in what I said today, that Allah forgive me for making such mistake and that he not cause you to be the bearer of such a mistake. But whatever Allah gave you from himself, we say, Alhamdulillah. Kima come to Salah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So straighten your lines. Straighten your lines. Be heel to heel. Shoulder to shoulder. Inshallah we'll pray for Lapa Jumah. May Allah accept our prayers. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawm-Ad-Din, Iyaka, Na'abudu, Wa Iyaka, Nasta'een, Iqdina, Sirat, Al-Mustaqeen, Sirat, Al-Ladina, Enamtu, Alayhim, Ghayru makdubi alayhim wala dhalim. Ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iza jaa nasrullahi wal fat wa ra'aytu al-nas yarakaluna fi dini alahi fawaja فَسَبِّ بِهَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din 
อีย่าคณะอับดุวายะคณะสตอกินอิกเดนัสเซราตุมุสตาคิมเซราตุลลัดีนาเอนัมตุอัลเลหิมไกรุมักดูบิอัลเลหิมวลัดดอลีนอัมิน قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الكناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من جنة والناس الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله dear believers uh, this um, concludes the obligatory portion of the salah And our prayer uh, for those that have to make their next move, we understand, but we'll have um, tasbih now uh, with further with uh, Soprano l a h Alhamdulillah, and Wa Allahu Akbar, uh, followed by a joint reciting of Surah Al Fatiha. May Allah accept our d i k r Soprano l a h Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Al Fatiha, Bismillah or Rahman or Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, or Rahman or Rahim, Maliki or Madin, Iya kana Abu Dua, Iya kana Stain, Iknina Sirat or Mustaqim. سرّات الذين أنمت عليهم غير مقدوب عليهم ولا دالين آمين تكبير 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 May Allah bless you believers. السلام عليكم.